What's up guys, this is Mike Loris bringing you game 2 between Complexity and Mouse Sports. This is the Defense Grand Finals. Game 1, uh, which should be up before this one if you're watching from my YouTube channel, but that was just a catastrophe because my mic didn't work and then I had to restart my computer and then it still didn't work, so it's going to have that buzzing. But there's nothing I could do about that except for oh. test diligently, but that kind of slipped my mind. It didn't really occur to me that my mic would completely fuck up at that moment, so... This, uh, hopefully everything's better in this game. I'm just gonna give it one final check, actually. Yeah, they're okay. Everything's, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything should be recording well, and we're gonna get on with this. Complexity Gaming is up 1-0 over Mouse Sports. This is the best of five. The Grand Finals of the Defense, two very good teams. They're both in front as far as their group stages go. Mouse Sports dropped down to the loser's bracket, but they managed to fight their way up to Complexity, and Complexity five fought their way remaining. through the a little bit, um... Well, not as many games in the winner's bracket, but they took game one very well with a stacked TC on the Lone Druid, so that's part of the reason why Lone Druid is being banned out right now, and a very impressive uh, Lashrak display as well. They went for a heavy pushing lineup, and they executed it very well. Mouse Sports kind of, well, I missed the early stages of the game because of the restart and stuff like that, but uh, they got pretty behind as far as that goes, and really they couldn't overcome that early disadvantage, but... Uh, complexity right now is, I believe, second ranked as far on the uh, Ghost Gamers ranking. I have to recheck that. But Mouse Sports is fourth place. They do have some pretty absurd win rates. Mouse Sports is something like 58, where Complexity is 70 or 80 something. It's pretty fucking ridiculous how many games Complexity wins. But this is once again game number two between Complexity and Mouse Sports. Game number one was pretty dominant. And we're going to see Lushrak being banned as well as the Lone Druid. So Mouse Boy is not interested in a repeat of that first game with the same heroes. He's going to force Complexity's hand into something a little bit different. Darkseer getting through the ban phase means he's going to be the first one picked up from Mouse Sports. That will give them a lot of solid lane control. Or, you know, a little bit of lane control on that long lane. But Rubik and Nature's Prophet, who were... Uh, Nature's Prophet was picked by Complexity last game. Not going to be surprised if J.O. is the one to pick that up this game as well. Rubik has been, was banned out last game, so he is lucky enough to make it into this game, show off a little bit of his prowess. He gets something like a illusion wall, what the fuck is it called? Wave wall of illusions? Wall of replica from the darks here, and then, well, you're gonna have blue things everywhere. It should be pretty fun to watch if he manages to draw that. Venomancer picked up from Mouse Sports as they did the last game. It had, had uh, quite a bit of impact they had a lot of anti-push power, and that's really what they needed. Combined with that Keeper of the Light pick that Maz picked up last time as well, they, ha they had a lot of counter-push. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough because the Lone Druid just got so freaking big, and Lone Druid plus Edict means that your towers aren't going to live long at all. But Maz Sports do have their support up, or like part of the support at least. Probably going to go for one more lighter support hero. But Venomaz are most likely going to be warding up the map and wasting all his money on the wards. Not wasting. Using. Investing. Investing his money in wards. Enchant is going to take up from Mouse Sports. So they have a lot of pushing power if they want to. An Ion Shell onto an Enchantress Creep. And then just run that around, pull the Creep Wave or something. It does a lot to the Creep Wave. And it makes the pushing that much easier, Venomaz, with those wards as well. Complexity. Do you have a lot of pushing as well with that Rubik? Fade Bolt does a remarkable amount to help them push because of the creep damage reduction. It's it adds up. Nature Prophet, of course, is Nature's Prophet, so you know there's that for pushing, which which hell it helps having Nature's Prophet on your team. It's a mediocre pushing hero, is what it is. Nature's Prophet is really just you know teleport is highly overrated, and Wrath of Nature, of course, doesn't do much damage either to the creep wave. In case you, yeah, sar sarcasm, guys. Sarcasm. I'm lying right now. But Complexity Gaming looks like they're actually going to pick up the Morphling this time around. <laughs> Morphling was picked up last time by Mouse Sports. Seeing quite a lot of play, I'm going to say it's going to take a bump up in the tier list. That, uh, well, the, uh, what is it? ESFI World tier list? And Morphling is up there, definitely. Rubik as well, who got plays kind of low, but he's really one of the go to support heroes. Uh, there, along with the Venomancer and the Shadow Demon. Complexity Gaming banning out the Anti Mage 
with Mouse Sports banning out the Tidehunter. Anti-Mage will do pretty well in this lane. They'll have the Venomancer and Enchantress to cover him. Darkseer in the long lane and then picking up someone like an Invoker who actually managed to get all the way through, which is kind of surprising, but, well, not really. Invoker has kind of been seeing a fall in popularity. He's definitely not picked up first anymore, but he's picked up very frequently, so... Still used pretty widely, just not as highly prioritized as some other heroes. But Complexity Gaming want to make sure that Mouse Sports do not get that 4-1 uh, idea going. Banning out that Anti-Mage, of course Mouse Sports does still have a lot of options left open to them. So without that Anti-Mage, I mean, they might have wanted to go for it, they might not have. But either way, it's going to be okay, because they're going to be able to get through this game. No problem if they decide to go for one, or maybe they're going to go for a power mid-game strategy. Complexity Gaming, looks like they might go for one. They could do something a little bit more aggressive if they play the Morphling that way. They get a lot of farm on, farm on the Morphling, get a very easy shotgun. Could do a lot of damage to the Venomancer Enchantress, as well as whoever Mouse Sports want to play. Final ban coming out from Mouse Sports. It's going to be that Beastmaster. So they're banning out, uh, what is it, three out of the five heroes that Complexity fielded last time. So Mouse Sports do not, they're not interested in a repeat. And if I were them, I would not be interested in a repeat either because, well, they lost last game. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't like it when I lose. And if I could prevent myself losing, I'm going to take every step of doing so. I would step short of picking Lycan every game because that's just obnoxious, and I don't really like playing Lycan. It's kind of boring. Storm Spirit, last ban out from Complexity. And once again, Invoker's still in the pool. Massport picks... Calling it right now, picking up an Invoker for the mid lane, as well as a hard carry for the bot lane. Dragon Knight. Gonna call that. That's that's, that's what my prediction for this game. Complexity. Um. Okay, okay, they're gonna get a Sand King, and um. Clinks. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, okay, I'm I'm completely wrong, guys. Mouseboss is gonna go for Clinks. Clinks is uh, kind of an, uh, I don't know, he, I mean like he's ranged, he has lots of lane control as far as hard carries go, and he could do a little bit of harassment damage, but usually it's not enough to actually get kills because he doesn't have any way of actually closing the gap like Morphling does, but Massport's gonna go for that hard carry, and uh, I believe you could eat Enchantress's creep, so that's a pretty cute combo right there, Enchantress won't be very happy about that because she loves nature and you have a skeleton. Ghost Rider kind of thing going on there. It's going to be eating all your creeps, and that's not very nature-esque. If I was nature, I wouldn't be happy about that at all. But they do have that combo. And Clinks actually has the potential to solo a lane. You don't really need to babysit Clinks as much as you need to babysit someone like an Anti-Mage or a Dragon Knight, as I unfortunately predicted. So Mouse Sports... Still has a lot of flexibility as far as how they want to lane this. And Chantress is going to go into the jungle. Venomancer probably going to go top with that Clinks. Darks are on the bottom lane. So once again, Invoker is still in this pool. If Invoker doesn't get picked, if he gets through everything, he's going to be pretty surprised. Complexity picking up the Lich. So they're going to be supporting someone. Won't be surprised to see Complexity cap off their lineup with a Brewmaster. Lich Brewmaster is a pretty substantial lane. And it doesn't really matter who you are mid, it's going to be very rough. S double slows, lots of magical damage, and well, with all that slow, you're going to be taking a lot of right-click damage as well. So, it's a pretty good combo. Lich was actually banned last game by the Mouse Sports team, so they know that Complexity likes to run this Lich with a harder uh, hitting hero in lane. Didn't want to deal with it that time, but they spent all their bans banning out the heroes that uh, Complexity used last game. So, no chance to ban out that Lich. And Mouse Sports, just pick up the Invoker. We know you want it. We know we want it. And if they go for a Wex build, it could be pretty good. Now, there's not enough real setup for an Exorc build. It's going to be rough. Oh, actually, Shadow Shaman. Interesting, interesting. So the pushing from Mouse Sports is going to be incredibly powerful. Strafe and Searing Arrow. Well, you know, that's, that's a lot of damage. Enchant, just Fetamancer, and the Shadow Shaman wards. So you're going to have wards at the ass. And then lots and lots of right-click power. Complexity Gaming might be a little bit hard-pressed to defend that. What they need to defend against that is just a ranged hero. 
They do have Rubik, and they do have Nature's Prophet. Blitz and Morphling are range, but not enough range. If they get close, try to right-click down those wards. They're going to get initiated upon. They're going to be in vacuum range. Stuff like that, and it's just dangerous stuff that Complexity doesn't want to deal with, but they do have a little bit of range. What they need right now is a little bit more, actually. Or that Brewmaster. Brewmaster will shut down those wards, because he doesn't give a shit how many wards there are. Panda's pretty much invulnerable for the... Uh, the Brulings, pretty much in unkillable for the early stages of the game. And uh, Mouse Sports, well, they do have a substantial amount of disable. Knit Complexity, their disables are mostly in the form of slow. Or, I mean, like, they have mostly pseudo disables. Telekinesis is their only for sure one. Oh, actually, Sand King. Very interesting pickup from Complexity. <sighs> so, once again, to note, Invoker, not in this game at all. Very interesting, considering Invoker was played last game. But I will give Complexity a lot of, uh, well, again, a little bit more crowd control effects and a devastating ultimate, but their ultimate isn't really the biggest right now. Uh, neither team really has a large amount of ultimates, so most likely this is going to be a high kill game because of the early game power coming out from both of these heroes. They both have their hard carries, so they do have that option of turtling up, but I really hope we don't see that because turtle games are freaking boring. And, uh... Yeah, that should be it. I'm just going to dip now into, oh good, two upvotes, and I don't know how many people are viewing because I don't want to actually open Five the stream. <sighs> okay, this is a much better start than last game. What? Bambo, what you doing? Pre Maybe they want a special battle. courier? Yeah, they want Stumpy. That's, that's actually pretty cool. I never actually thought of that. but Okay, we're going to have Black playing the typical role that Black plays. Clink's on the hard carry, looking to go top lane. Sing Sing soloing up the Shadow Shaman. I don't think I've seen this from him before. Bot lane is going to be an aggressive uh, jungle of Come With Me. Bambo on the Venomancer and 1437 on the Darkseer. So this tri going to be very, very peculiar. It's okay, I forgive you, Black. Uh, Darkseer, usually you see sol uh, soloing a bot lane. Maybe Bambo and Come With Me are going to be going into the jungle, doing aggressive stuff that way, and kind of roaming around. But either way, TC on the traditional hard carry that he likes to play, that is the Morphling. IX Mike supporting on the Rubik with love and stuff on the Sand King. Hannah Montana is going to be playing the Lich and cap off the complexity lineup. J.O. once again with his giant flower stick. On the Nature's Prophet. Nature's Prophet looks like he's going to go mid, and he's... Is that an early bottle build? I mean, like, this build is typically what you see from people who want to pick up an early bottle. But Nature's Prophet with a bottle is just the not seen very is. often. We're really going to have to see what Bambo and Come With Me want to do with this. Looks like it's going to be a dual lane. Morphling and Sand King? With... Ix Mike should transition down to the bot lane, and I think Come With Me and Bambo are going to be aggressively jungling, giving 147 a little bit more room. So yeah, I think that's what's going to happen. Sing Sing versus Jo on this mid lane should be relatively even. Top lane is going to be a solo lane Lich versus Black. Black is going to get really, really big. Complexity needs to change something right there. Fluff and stuff looking to get a bro strike on to Come With Me. They do get it. Ix Mike is going to follow up with the Levitate, bringing him back just a little bit. Slowing him, Ix Mike down, come with me, taking quite a lot of damage. And here comes the Morphling. No, Sand King actually picking up the first blood. So the complexity off to a roaring start. And Montana, though, getting his ass handed to him on this top lane. Lich is not the best solo hero, especially when he's laned up against the... What? What is this? Enchantress picked up a, uh, a mana burner. He's going to piss off TC a little bit. Here we go. How much damage does it burn? 100. It's not bad. Two mana burns and Morphling is severely crippled. It's not going to get you any kills. It's mostly just going to piss the other team off. Bambo already not really doing much of an impact. It's going to be 1437 versus TC mostly in this bot lane. And Montana, it, he is going to solo. That's very interesting. He's going to get a lot of guaranteed denies. But it's going to be rough for him to try to last hit. I just say that he gets two instantly. So what do I know? But Fluff and Stuff and Ix Mike going to run into the set of Soul Stealer. He's burned quite a bit of mana so far. So come with me. Picking up another one, actually. Taking what he can get. 
has unlimited mana burns. There's the rest of the mana for Sand King. And the Gale onto Ix Mike. Gonna be doing a little bit of right clicking. I don't think he's gonna go down for this. He might actually telekinesis him down on to come with me, buying himself a little bit more time, but Ix Mike is in a little bit of danger. He actually gets taken down by the Enchanters. 157 surging in, popping an iron shell on himself, and now Pluff and stuff is in a little bit of trouble. Bought up boots before he did anything at all. Orange is gonna teleport right back in. That is the Rubik. Gave TC a little bit of time to just farm up that lane freely. But now 147 might be doing a little bit of lane cutting. Like, he does have a little bit of anti-mana backup from the Satter Soul Stealer. And yeah, he's going to be interested in lane cutting. It's going to make things a little bit rough for TC on that bot lane. Forced to last hit under the tower, where 147 getting all the last hits, and now we might see another engagement. These creeps from Enchant just pushing everyone back. But TC is still getting CS. He doesn't have a waveform for escape, but he does have two points of morph. He's going to last it decently. 147 now looking to be very aggressive onto TC, taking quite a few tower hits as well. That Bamboo now taking out the tower. TC has to start strength morphing right now. He is going to survive a little bit more with that strength morph. J.O. teleporting in. Looking to go for that Bamboo. TC is going to get taken down by the Enchantress and she's going to get Telekinesis back. Now Fluff and stuff is here with the Barrel Strike. Come with me. He's going to get taken down by the Sand King. And where is Bamboo? He's still in the jungle. He doesn't have a teleportation tool. He's screwed. It's just a matter of doing as much damage and buying up anything or not. Yeah, you're not going to get out of here. Major Prophet slowly working down that Venomancer. Teleporting in from the mid lane. Going to give Sing Sing a little bit more time, a little bit free space. Trying to get to level 6 as fast as he can. And what's Major Prophet? And Major Prophet actually did get a bottle, so he might be looking to get a lot of heavy ganks off. Health and stuff is going to spot out 1437 and. Now, uh, come with me picking up an actual standard creep. Unfortunately for him, he is spotted out by J.O. And Fluff and stuff is circling around Telekinesis as well as Sprout. Kind of overlapping the disables a little bit, but come with me taking so much damage, morphling with the last hit. Bambo now might be in a little bit of trouble. There's no mana for anything at all. And there's nothing's on cooldown ever. Actually, a teleport in from J.O. Gonna get that Sprout off as well as the Fade Bolt. Rubik with that little green bolt of death. Gonna take out the last hit. 157 trying to go kill, get kill on J.O. He is gonna get it, but not before getting taken down himself. Completely bluff and stuff. Now on the run from Ascent Archon. Run! Oh, he got clubbed to death. That's unfortunate. So, 6-4 in favor of Complexity. They're off to a pretty good start. Hannah Montana, what are you? Well, 16 for 3 versus 12 for 3. So, uh, the Lich actually not doing that well, uh, not doing that poorly. He's level 4, where Clinks is level 5. So, he's not doing the best, but really, what do you expect from a Lich versus a Clinks lane? Very rough for that Lich. But now that his Frost Blast is starting to get a little bit higher level, this Clinks is starting to start to take a little bit of damage. I don't think Hannah Montana could actually kill him. And if he does, I would be very surprised. But he, that lane is actually holding its own. And the bottom lane for Complexity is working out okay. Mouse is getting a couple of good retaliation kills. Oh no, Just come with me, might be in a little bit of trouble. Gonna run into the Sand King, force him to run the other way. There goes the Burrow Strike. Ix Mike is here as well, teleport in from J.O. Getting a Sprout as well, come with me. Instantly eating through the tree, so he might be able to get out of this with that heal. But TC is here with the level 3 waveform. Come with me, he's gonna die. 147 is chasing down Ix Mike though. He needs to unleash anything he can. There goes the Fade Ball taking him out. TC is gonna go for 1437. One more right click, one more right click. There's the right click from J.O. Taking him down as well. Fluff and stuff is on the run, getting right click down by the Venomancer. Bambo picking up an easy kill, but now he's gonna be a 1v1. J.O. versus Bambo fight. TC actually very weak. Where did all your health go? TC, you need to pop yourself right now. Sprout on Bambo, trying to hold him out, but now Sing Sing is in this fight. He does have his wards up. And he's going to hex onto J.O., probably drop down his wards, gets a double ward trap, beautiful play by Sing Sing, but he's unfortunately a little bit too close to the tower, he's getting taken down, and the wards have gone down, allowing Ix Mike to walk out of that, J.O. did take a fall, however, Bambo still being a little pest with his plague wards, but Sing Sing getting taken down, he used his wards, not doing the most damage, I believe he got a... Yeah, he did get one kill, so it's not all bad, but he ended up giving a kill to the Morphling. Now another Telekinesis on to come with me. Fluff and stuff is here looking for a double Burrow Strike. Come with me is trying to prevent that angle, and he doesn't, and he does prevent it. Hannah Montana looking towards Bamboo, but he's just sitting in the middle of the Ion Shell. 157 now stuck in the trees. He's getting taken down as well. Now before doing quite a lot of damage to Hannah Montana as well as TC. All five from Complexity are down in this lane. Bamboo on the run, but he has nowhere to run. Burrow Strike from the Sand King. Frost Blast and Right Clicks. And this is going to mean a push onto the bot lane after two more easy kills from Complexity. It's also going to mean that Black is going to get a little bit of free farm, put a little bit of hurt on this tower, but he can't put hurt on the tower as much as this complexity side could destroy their tier 1 tower on the bot lane. If they choose to do so, they might just roam around instead. 
by all the time in the world for TC. Now 6-1-2. and two. That is a beautiful start for that Morphling. He's getting a lot of experience, a lot of kills. And now come with me, trying to do something to this Lich, but that's not a good idea. You don't want to be here, come with me. Because Fluff and stuff is circling around, doesn't actually have mana. Well, now he does have mana. So he could have done something there, but uh, Lich, just not interested in picking a fight. Fair enough. 1437. Not even with boots yet. Probably gonna, it's okay to delay the boots a little bit with darks here, but with the amount of fights that's been going on, he's not gonna get he's not getting much money. Died three times, has a soul ring, so he does have that ion shell spam up his sleeve. Looks like there's not gonna be a push. Plus he doesn't have the most pushing power on their heroes at the moment. I'm actually level four nature's call on the nature's profit. But the bot lane, mostly they're gonna use it as a farming ground for TC. Warflames in Trying to get really big really quickly. If you get a fast uh, shotgun, no one from Maz is safe except for the darks here when he builds up a little bit more damage. TC is going to farm up the bot lane all day long. Attack. And Hannah Montana, 18 7 versus 39 for 3. So kind of falling behind, as expected. When you run a Lich on the top lane, it's not really about outlaning the other person, though. It's kind of hard to do so. TC actually looking to go a little bit of aggressive. A little bit of aggression onto 1437. Not actually to get a kill, because, well, this early in the game, Morphling, it's hard to get a solo kill. And also, uh, Blue wasn't in any position to help. His plague boards are just freaking everywhere. Spotting out Fluff and stuff, giving him no angles for anything. Rubik level 5, let's take a let, uh, level 5, level 5. Level 4, level 4, huh. So the support's kind of even, and I don't really want to count Lich as a support right now because he's not really being played as a support hero. Uh, Lich solo, you would see it occasionally, but that was usually in the mid lane. And usually it was more about controlling the lane. And against this clank, it's going to be rough. No matter who you put up against him solo, it's going to be a little bit difficult. Push now, coming in from the mouse port squad, using vacuum and ion shell just completely demolish the wave shock as well. Most likely going to pop off the Mass Serpent Wards. If they need to do so, there, there, there it is. So this tower is going to go down. Orange teleporting in, trying to get a couple of points of damage with that Fade Bolt. Not jumping well, unfortunately, for them. And this tower might actually live. Teleport being cancelled by the Morphling. Picking up another Teleport Scroll immediately. So I'm wasting a little bit of money. But forcing everyone from the mouse back, and he's going to just keep farming this bot lane. Boots now up on the darks here. The TC already has Boots, Ring of Aquila, Bottle, as well as Magic Wand. So his early game is pretty much set. A lot more utility coming out from the Rubik and Sand King versus the Enchantress, who didn't really get the luckiest of creep picks, as well as the Venomancer. So a lot more stuns, a lot more kill power, which is why Complexity is sitting at this lead that they are right now. Actually, no, the gold is kind of equalized, probably due to the top lane. Because the top lane for complexity is kind of a dead lane. Lich survived, he got a couple levels up. But really, uh, versus the Clinks, it's not really... Yeah, it's not going to do fantastically. But it survived. He didn't get killed at all, so I guess that's... You know, count your blessings as far as that goes. Ix Mike, as well as Fluff and stuff, on this top lane, maybe looking for a kill on the Clinks. Do they have any true sight? They do have dust. They just need to get in there. 147, pausing. And disconnecting. So I guess we have a little bit of a disconnect going on here. Not many items on many people at all. Clank's going straight for that Orchid, packing those two so uh, Sage Masks. Used to be called Sobi Masks, no longer. There's a really fast reconnect, and here we go. So he's going for the fast Orchid. Will help him quite a bit against the Sand King and this Morphling. Get those kills, prevent them from casting their spells to escape. And Sanking and Morphling really known as escape artists, so that could help quite a bit. Here comes the engagement now, but Black seems to smell something coming. They're still out of range, they're still in smoke. But Ix Mike does get his smoke dispelled. And there is support coming in the form of Come With Me onto that top lane. But Ix Mike, as well as the Lich, could manhandle them pretty easily. 157 not getting the most out of this bot lane. But uh, Darkseer is known to survive the bot lane no matter what situation he's put in because of that Ion Shell. TC is doing pretty well as far as farm goes, but Sing Sing is on the top. Has Arcane Boots almost at a Blink Dagger. Once he has that, the initiation range from Mao is going to be quite a lot. If they surge Shadow Shaman 
or just uses Blink Dagger. Either way, it could be pretty good for initiation. Get a nice Hex off. Maybe Ward Trap. Maybe a double Ward Trap if he's Super Baller, which apparently he is, so. Nature Prophet picking up an 11 minute Midas. Not the fastest Midas in the world, but he's gonna be going to accelerate his farm by quite a bit. He picked the same item up last game. Unfortunately, I did not get a read on the time of which he purchased that item, so I cannot Radiant speak to whether or not this is faster or slower. But this tower is going to take quite a bit of damage. Lots of Hellboys coming in, actually. Going to get the Ward Trap on yellow. No, it actually gets cancelled, and Shadow Shaman does take a tower. tower so Lich is forced to stay on the top lane, but we'll put some free damage on that. Black is going to circle around, start off with the Strafe. Hannah Montana is going to get solo killed by this Clings. Unfortunate. That's what happens. I mean, like, Lich is not the best hero as far as survivability goes, and Clanks is a pretty good assassin on those squishies. And I don't know how this thing is flying. Those wings must be really fucking powerful. But TC's going straight for a sh shotgun. So we're gonna see some double barreled action going on here. It's gonna be very exciting. Bambo still not even with war uh with boots. Whereas Fluff and stuff does boots and a magic wand actually. Rubik well, I guess Rubik and uh, Venomancer are kind of equalized, but the thing is with Rubik is that the stronger his opponents get, the stronger... Th oh, that's what I mean. The stronger his opponents get, the stronger his spell steals get. And now he has Master from Mars. They can make a very powerful push right now if Ax Mike saves the mana for it. It will drain out the rest of his mana, but for a tower, I think it's worth it. J.O. trying to defend this tower against Black, who's going to do a little bit more damage, but he gets uh, smoked up. I mean, dusted up and Warfling with that waveform picking up a kill. Come with me, actually taking an unlucky bounce from that Chain Frost. Gonna get blasted down by the Lich. This tower on the top lane, not long for life, especially considering the fact that Rubik is coming up there with his Mass Serpent Ward. Complexity with a pretty substantial lead right now. Fluff and Stuff is on the bot lane. Might get jumped by Sing Sing, and that will mean the death of Fluff and Stuff. Especially considering, uh, especially since his Sandstorm is not up on cooldown, he might be in a little bit of trouble right now, but his, the rest of his team is taking out a tower. So Fluff and Stuff getting hexed out, as well as the Shock 157 running in, using back in Fluff and Stuff back, shackled it onto Fluff and Stuff. He needs to get a Bro Strike out of here. He's gonna. He's hiding hide in the trees, actually. J.O. teleporting in, but the ward dropped off from Sing Sing, gonna force J.O. to retreat. Two more teleports coming in, orange and yellow. That is Hannah Montana, as well as the Rubik. So all the support and. <laughs> the hell? Seriously, fun and stuff? Just epicentering out of nowhere, okay. But everyone managed to live. TC picked up the tower, I think. Uh, no, J.O. picked up the tower. TC doesn't give a fuck about this black hero guy. Teleport out instantly from TC. No interrupts coming out from the mouse side. They only have a... Well, they have, they have quite a few, actually, so... Teleports would be pretty good. Uh, but Vacuum and Shadow Shaman with a Blink Dagger now able to interrupt those teleports out. So that was the first tower going down for complexity, balancing out the mid tower that they lost to that Shadow Shaman. Looking towards the bot lane tower next, Fade Bolt's gonna go out, and uh, 157 needs support if he wants to defend this. Lich starting off with his frost ar uh, ice armor. I thought his frost armor. Am I crazy? I think I am. But he's actually going to teleport to the mid lane where they everyone is not. Everyone's actually heading towards the bot lane. Sing Sing going to look for a kill. Axe Mike and Hannah Montana got to get out of here. No more wards. No more ward mana actually on Rubik. This tower is going to get taken down. Enchantress in the meantime picking up the top tower. So kind of making these trades even as far as the towers go. Hannah Montana and Axe Mike still on this bot lane. Here comes Fluff and stuff, as well as TC, as well as J.O. and Serpent Wards. Bet Mavs didn't expect those to pop up again. This tower is going to get demolished. Let's see if TC could right-click through these Serpent Wards. Super Baller status. Oh, very nice. Morphling picking up a tower, and that is going to mean he's only a little bit off of his Agonim's... Uh, <laughs> Ghost Sept... No, fucking Shotgun. Ethereal Blade. Agonim Scepter Morphling doesn't work. J.O. teleporting down to the bot lane, as well as TC, might look for Come With Me. Come With Me, very soft hero at this point, and TC looking like he's not gonna, he's gonna decide against that. He only had mana for one waveform. Wouldn't have been a guaranteed kill at all, which has been a uh, wasted farm time. Sing Sing, almost level 11, gonna have that level 2 ward up very shortly. With Lich, almost level 11 as well, and level 2 Chain Frost is very devastating. Complexity 
Uh, with that epicenter to clear out the creep wave, combined with chain frost, could be a pretty devastating combo, provided that Sand King doesn't get stuck in this tree again. Oh, my throat's starting to feel it. I have no idea how Toby goes on with so much excitement for so long. It's really remarkable. Respect all casters for how long they can do that. Like, MLG watching StarCraft, it's like, you've been casting for like five hours. How the hell? Like, you have dual cast, uh, dual casters. They have a partner in crime, so. I guess if I had a co caster, everything would be a lot easier on my voice, I guess. But, uh, we're. I don't have one. If you want to dual cast with me, drop me a PM, I guess. With this Morphling, 713. Almost at his shotgun. Not his, uh, Aghanim Scepter. Doesn't even help him. I don't know why the hell you would want that. Maybe if enough people get Aghanim Scepter on the Morphling, then noobs would start to think that it actually is like a standard build. And they would want to do it too. Very cute stuff going out from Mouse. Farming up the creep camps from the low ground with that iron shell plus these serpent wards, plague wards. They have serpent wards and plague wards, but those are not serpent wards. Smoke up from the complexity side, looking to run into 1437 telekinesis as well as an epicenter. Darkseer just got annihilated. Holy shit, he is no chance in hell of escaping from that one. This is going to mean a little bit of pressure going onto the tier 2. Still have full health. But every ounce of pressure that complexity puts on. Two Maus is another free creep kill for TC. Almost at his Ethereal Blade, drawing ever closer with only 400 left. 3100 on the Nature Prophet. He's pretty freaking rich. He's going to have his Pandemitis up very soon as well. And uh, they don't have Epicenter, which is just going to weaken their push by a little bit. But actually, they're going to spot out the Roshan attempt from Sing Sing as well as Come With Me. They're in a lot of trouble right now. Sing Sing especially. Love and stuff. Going to Burrow Strike on Come With Me. Instantly going into that Sandstorm. Ruby picking up that kill with Fade Bolt. Sing Sing getting Chain Frosted. Bouncing off of Roshan, unfortunately, for him. And now, Dab Strike going off onto Sling. He's going to run away. Bambo on this is ultimate before he dies. And a Burrow Strike onto all of them. Beautiful Burrow Strike by Love and stuff. Gonna right click down black. Black is gonna get taken down by TC. Sing Sing is actually back into this game. He bought back TC strength morphing, trying to survive out of this. He doesn't have much mana anymore. Last adaptive strike attempt onto Clink. So now TC is gotta get out of here. Morphing a little bit to agility, I think I saw. To try to get a little bit more mileage out of that bottle, but he's just gonna die to all these heroes from Maus. That was actually a remarkably good fight from Maus. Buybacks coming out. Who actually got a buyback? Could I? Ah. That is so useful. So Kling spot back. Garum, Garum. One, two, three. Wow, everyone fucking bought back. Unfortunately, uh, the buybacks from Complexity were weren't able to get close because well, these towers are a lot closer. So Mao's kind of doing well with their dire advantage with those buybacks. Gotta drink that water. Is under My voice is gonna go out. Okay, we're continuing to farm. Picked up an ultimate orb, so he's gonna be going for a hex. And fluffing stuff defending his lane. This tower could be denied, and Hand Montana's gonna work on that now with a mech. So the big items are starting to come up on the complexity side. Unfortunately, the shotgun got delayed by just a little bit. We're gonna be Radiant's okay with that, however. Has been Still, a 20 minute shotgun is pretty damn fast. TC stealing some of J.O.'s farm. Cause it's the team thing to do. And now Bambo trying to farm some ancients, but Fluff and stuff and Hannah Montana are very close, but he does have backup from 1437 as well as Sing Sing. So Bambo trying to get a couple of levels up. You get a level 2 ultimate, it will deal a lot more damage. Corey now buying up that shotgun component. Morphling is going to be a very deadly force. Level 12 though, so not the strongest as far as his stat growth goes. But still, uh, Maus is in a lot of danger. The heroes are very soft. Darkseer will be able to tank it very well, but Morphling definitely won't cast it on the Darkseer. He has plenty of options as far as the shotgun goes. So everyone from Complexity walking around and Clink's going to spot them all out. Unfortunately, once they dispel that smoke, 
They're gonna know that Clinks is around there somewhere. Clinks actually, uh, where are you going? Oh no, almost is the victim. Bro strike and frost blast as well as fade bolt and a chain frost even. Kind of a uh, kind of a little bit of overkill, but hell, Enchantress is deader than dead. Clinks picking off Nature Coven with the help of Sing Sing. So one to one trade didn't benefit Mao's just a little bit. Sing Sing gonna blink in, like, fluffing stuff. A good reaction time. Ward dropped off from Sing Sing. Sing Sing gonna get dropped down right onto two people. So using that levitate to good effect. Fluffing stuff. And a bro strike in with that epicenter, trying to bring down Sing Sing. Unfortunately, it's not gonna be enough damage. It will bring down the Aegis eventually, but not after a very long time. 157 now on the chase for Ix Mike. Link's not in the range to help. And Sing Sing, hexing up fluffing stuff. TC is still here as well, looking for someone. He's gonna find. Oh no, 157 is stuck up there. Now it's gonna be TC waveforming up with that shotgun to annihilate the rest of his health. Fluffing stuff still going strong onto. Uh, Sing Sing as well as Bamboo. He does still have that Sandstorm up his sleeve and there's no detection but Fluffing Stuff is shackled up taking a lot of damage from this plane. He's silenced as well. That's going to mean the death of Sand King. Another good fight from Outsports. But TC, uh, I mean like Clinks has Orchid. He's level 17. Morphling is only level 14. But Morphling is Morphling. A lot, a lot more survivable than Clinks is. One sec guys. Uh, that's not how you drink water. I feel like I run into that problem a lot when I'm drinking water. When I'm drinking water and casting, I mean, it's just like, not, you don't want to breathe it in. So if you guys are taking notes on how to drink, it's more, uh, okay. Uh, fuck it, total gold earned, gold per minute, it's all the same thing. Thank you, Miserum. Love you, man. One for three seven. Trying to defend the push, but TC so much damage. That hood definitely saved his ass. An extra thirty percent spell resistance is gonna save you from that shotgun. But the rest of the complexity is here, and now one for three seven has to fall back and go. Well, he's actually regenerating pretty fast, so he might just want to stay. But he needs support right now. TC and Jo and Ix Mike and well, all of complexity working on this tower. No epicenter is up. Chain frost is up. However, 157 gonna blink in with that wall. Sing Sing is gonna take a chain frost. The bounces aren't gonna be the best. However, TC has taken a lot of damage. Ix Mike popping off the dust before he does go down. He does have an ether shock, but clinks with that last searing out. Gonna pick up a kill and one, and complexity is forced to fall back. Good defense by Mouse Sports, doing their part to slowly get back into this game. And uh, actually. Well, okay, fair enough. Never mind. Nature Prophet has picked up a Manta Style, which is a pretty interesting choice. Usually you don't see Manta Style until Nature Prophet gets a little bit more of an item advantage, and now, oh no, Fluff and Stuff TC and Hannah Montana might be in a little bit of trouble. They're going to be spotted out by this Clinks. Sing Sing is here as well. They fell back though. They didn't have any vision, so just Star Sense working for them, Map Awareness. And they fell back without any casualties. Looks like they might be grouping up for smoke. Might be. Perhaps not. What's coming out? Just wards. So no smoke coming out from the complexity side right now. Do they even have smoke? They've been using smoke quite a lot. Yeah, there's one smoke. But I feel like whenever I check, there's always one smoke. So I don't know if that's like actually checking to see if the smokes are there. Whatever. Just gonna recheck that stuff. And Age Prophet sending out some illusions. Here gonna put some go. damage on come with me. Very slowly, because one of his illusions got stolen, so that sucks. Morphling's gotta watch out for that. Now with an Ogre Club going to go for a BKB. Once he gets that, I mean Rasta isn't gonna be able to do shit to him. Clink's still a little bit, but the searing arrow damage is going to be a lot less. And that's pretty much it. So BKB is going to give the Morphling a lot of time to just sit there and do his damage. He doesn't have the most right click, though, quite yet. He's only level 15 again, compared to the 18 from Clink's, who got free farm for pretty much the entire game. His farm was never really contested. It was contested a little bit in the early stages of the game. But uh, with that gank from, or failed gank, actually, from the Lich, as well as the... Uh, Enchantress. No, not Enchantress. Rubik. Lich and Rubik. Enchantress is on his team. But now, uh, seems to be a little bit of a farming stalemate. They just need TC to get 
really big complexity does and mouse boards need clinks to get just as big if not bigger eat him how I love that death pack used to be only castable on your own guys it's still called death pack yeah it is so it used to be like uh, I don't know if you guys ever played Warcraft 3 the death knight had a death coil unholy aura and death pact and you just eat your own creep and just get health so it just used to be a healing thing now it's like a healing and damage thing which is I find it ridiculous because I don't know how they managed to balance that but it used to be like um, only friendlies I believe and it would give you like 200 percent of their health so it would be pretty much a full heal you wouldn't really see it used that much on clings though so. Just a little bit of did you know Dota history as far as the uh, as far as the Bone Fletcher goes. I had to check up that stuff, man. And this game is not happening anytime soon. BKB is gonna be built up by the Morphling. Unfortunately, yeah, I don't have my other screen set up, so I kind of have to check on this stuff occasionally. And you guys just have to sit there and watch it. Or else everything's gonna just go to hell again, just like last time. So bad. That recording sucked. Oh no, Fluff and Stuff is gonna get ganked up by Black. And he actually just uses Burrow Strike. And he's a Sandstorm, but as soon as he moves out, he doesn't have a Blink Dagger. Black is gonna get a very easy kill. Fluff and Stuff is gonna die. There goes the Orchid. There goes the Strafe. Trying to teleport out, but the damage from Black is simply too much. He even has all his team coming. I'm not sure if that is actually worth it for a dead Sand King. Black seems to be very capable of doing that by himself. But they're going to be pushing down in the top lane, I believe. They, once again, they don't have to because Klinks does have a Lincoln Sphere up, which is going to protect him a little bit from these disables coming out from Complexity. Not the same as a BKB, so he's going to still get stunned eventually. Just going to protect him a little bit from certain stuns. Everyone from uh, both teams actually seems to be content with farming, not actually interested in getting a whole lot of pushing happening right now. Looking for a couple picks, I mean, like we just saw one from Black, so a little bit coming out from there. But now the teleports down to the bot lane, it's going to be 1437 defending up against J.O., going to throw his trance to the meat grinder, that is an ion shell. And a little bit of a push on the top lane, Black with uh, searing arrows as well as that strafe. Doing a ton of damage. Come with me is actually pretty weak. Fluff and stuff looking for retaliation kill. He's not going to get a bro strike off. He's actually using the chain frost to interrupt the disable. Come with me is so damn dead. Bro strike for Fluff and stuff. Right clicks in from the J who just teleported in. Lich with the right clicks. Taking now then. Enchantress. Come with me staying a little bit uh, when he's not welcome. And Fluff and stuff is going to just circle around and boom. Explosion of a tower. Fun stuff. Fun stuff. Four people now on the top lane for complexity. Maybe you just. I think they don't want to really push this. They just want to get the creeps onto the other side of the map, get as much map control as they possibly can, and TC uh, just buy t uh, buy time for TC to farm. Because TC is going to be the most devastating force in the late game. Oh no, Clink's just annihilating IX Mike. What was that? Three hits. Telekinesis not going to help. Fade Bolt not going to help. Clink's is an assassin. But in a giant fight, this BKB is going to benefit the Morphling a lot more than a Lincoln Sphere is going to benefit that Clinks. It will help him a little bit against that shotgun combo. So he won't get insta killed. But uh, the magic, the stuns, or uh, yeah, the stuns coming out from complexity and like the sheer magic damage, Chain Frost, Epicenter, Nature's Prophet, his ultimate. It's just a lot of damage, and I don't really know if the Lincoln Sphere is the correct choice right now compared to the Black King Bar. Shadow Shaman has the right idea. Get that Black King Bar be completely immune. Lincoln Sphere will give him a lot of spamming power for its spells, but with Orchid, that problem is pretty much fixed. Orchid and Aquila, especially, that dual combo, and now Black. Hunting for someone. Not going to find the Morphling. He's been farming the jungle by himself, but he finds anyone else. I'm pretty sure... Yeah, Nature, no, Nature Prophet could split out and try to teleport. It'll be kind of close, but he might live. But everyone else could just be insta-killed by Black. Now going to be packing, or very shortly, packing an Aegis of the Immortal. Complexity is making no movement to take care of this either, so it looks like this Roshan is going to get taken down extremely quickly. And there's nothing that Complexity could really do about this. 
This is gonna put Mouseports at a pretty substantial advantage if they're not already at one. A little bit of gold advantage as far as complexity goes and a little bit more experience going the Mouse side. So complexity uh, sitting at a little bit of gold advantage but really that gold advantage is not much at all. A thousand at this point in the game is pretty much zero. So the experience is really going to help Ma uh, Mouse a little bit more. Level 20 Clinks versus a uh, level 16 Morphling. So Clinks keeping very well ahead of that Morphling now with the Demon Edge. So uh, let's see. Uh, Bree uh, not Breeza. Daedalus or MKB. Both will be very good choices. And oh, they're actually going to go for the Sand King. It's a trap. Fun stuff. Are there any spells that make your illusions pop? That would be awesome. If you had like detonating illusions on some hero. I'm sure there is. I'm just drawing a complete blank right now. Jo still camping out in the bot lane. Gonna sh shred his own tree and trying to do a little bit of damage. But 157 is just gonna num 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 num. Mm, mm, um, Treants free food. Delicious, delicious farm for that Dark Series. Now with a pipe. Still not the most health. So you could pick up a Vanguard if you choose to do so. Or go for something a little bit more bulky like a uh, Ligonum Scepter. Might be a pretty good choice. I'm getting a deny on the tower. And uh, might be a little bit late for Vanguard. But it's never too late to get extra health. So it's just a matter of what he wants to pick up. Black is going to run to Fluff himself with double damage. One, two, three, four hits. Now Black might be in a little bit of trouble to getting telekinesis. TC just wailing on him. Where's the shotgun combo? There it is. But Rubik unfortunately did not have any true sight. There was a ward, but Black just ran out of that ward. You really need dust if you're going to take out a Clinks like that. Sand King's not going to be up for this upcoming team fight. If there is a team fight at all, Ax Mike is invisible with that skeleton walk. But the pipe from 7 going to mitigate a lot of that fade bolt damage. This tower is going to get demolished. Double damage, strafe, searing arrow, dead tower. Ooh, 1437. Barely missing out on a vacuum. Lich picked up a four staff. And, uh, well, Mao seems to be content with getting a free tower. Why not? Go to the bot lane, pick up a second free tower, and then you're rolling in the free towers. If you save, a, if you have a free tower today and then a free tower tomorrow, so then you're going to have free okay I don't know uh, I'm not even gonna try to do that I don't even like that guy I don't even know why I'm trying to imitate the routine fuck that shit but a smoke up now for from complexity getting everyone but Jo looks like he doesn't want to actually run with the group probably a good idea because you can just teleport in and the second or two it takes to actually teleport in not gonna be a very big deal Ax Mike is leading the charge with that skeleton walk so even if his smoke gets disabled he will be able to run into someone bambo he actually saw the ward getting placed down, so he knows that people are there. It's just a matter of whether or not Complexity wants to continue with this fight. If they get their epicenter perfectly, if they get their chain frost perfectly, Mao's is just going to melt. But Mao's has the blink dagger on the Shadow Shaman. They could get the initiation, and if they do, it's going to be dangerous for the Complexity side. They're all still here. TC, there goes the epicenter channeling from the Sand King. Here it comes, huge epicenter, as well as chain frost bouncing in between heroes only. Beautiful chain frost from that Lich. Hitting all the heroes, but Nature's Prophet taking out the Venomancer and two down from the Mao's side as TC is still here. Sing Sing gonna get annihilated. Come with me being the next to fall, I bet. Burst Strike onto him, and Fluff and stuff actually with that poison on him is gonna try to run away. Venomancer picking up a double kill from the poison. Jo with seven HP is gonna try to teleport out. Come with me, one more hit. He's gonna take Jo out, but TC is still following. Come with me, TC with the, those right clicks. What are balls of death? Taking out the la one of the last heroes from Mao's. 1437 still have full health, but. That's, you don't focus the darks here. That's just not what you do. Fluff and stuff is still around here. Picked up a haste rune, so no free escape from the darks here. Where are you going? Q Benny Hill. Fluff and stuff, uh, not in any danger, but he's going to get out regardless. But TC just completely cleaned up. Major Prophet got two kills. Um, Venomancer got two kills. That, that uh, ultimate from Venomancer, really freaking powerful. Like, I'm sure if you played against Venomancer, you would know that. But when you see Venomancers in pro games, it doesn't seem like his ultimate deals very much ever. Because there's usually pipe, there's usually mech. Mech is up on the complexity side. That'll only do so much to really save you from that Nova. TC is actually pretty freaking rich. He's packing a huge amount of heat. It's actually uh, not all on agility either. 
And he's level 20 versus Klinks is 22. So Morphling kind of closing the gap a little bit. I'm going to go for a Manta style or an Eye of Scotty. Um, either one will be good, actually. I hope it's Scotty because Scotty is freaking awesome. Jay was being very bold in his farming, teleporting all the way to the other jungle. Try to get a little bit of their farm out so that they cannot. Uh, doesn't look like he's going to pay for it, but he's he's uh, playing with fire right here. Because Bambo and Come With Me are both coming up the ledge. They're going to know that J.O. was around here. you got to teleport like right now, man. He's going to get out just fine. That was a little bit too close for comfort. I would never do that because oh, fuck, I'll just get killed. Love and stuff blinking very aggressively, looking for someone. Gets stomped by the centaur instead. Hannah Montana is forced to, forced to have himself up onto the high ground, following that sand king. And, well, everyone went up onto that cliff, so that cliff is getting a lot of action this game. Hannah Montana getting blocked up by treants. <laughs> well, it's a lot of treants actually. This treant army from Nature Prophet is quite substantial. Mouse isn't looking to fight in the lane. They're actually going to go for a side gank. That is going to be very, very good uh, thing to do because the epicenter won't be able to pop out. 1.7 getting a perfect ultimate. Fluff and stuff is going to come in with that epicenter. Here it comes right onto Black doing a lot of damage. But Black already picked up a double kill. Sing Sing trying to go for TC. Holding him off out of play for just a little bit. But he's going to get right click down. TC now going after Black. Black is going to skeleton walk. Just barely get away with his life. Dark Seer picked up a double. Uh, Nature Prophet actually. TC now on the run, getting vacuumed back. He has to wait for him down. He has to wait for him down right now. Do it, do it. He's going to get out, but right into the clutches of Black. If Black decides to open up on this, he's going to be in a lot of trouble, though. TC is still running, and he's going to get hexed up by Sing Sing, who's very low HP. And TC is going to take a fall. Beautiful, beautiful fight being played out from Mouse Sports. Catching Complexity in a flanking kind of maneuver. And Complexity... Was not prepared for that. The Sand King did not get a great ultimate off on several people. Two people died right off the bat. Chain Lich didn't even have an opportunity to get off his Chain Frost. So Mao's just with the maneuvering, picking up a very easy fight that will put them even farther in the lead as far as experience goes. Gold is still kind of even. We do have the uh, Morphling as well as Nature Prophet keeping pace with that Clinks. So the farm is pretty even as far as that goes. Plus only two kills de uh, difference. One tower is not going to mean the highest, so it, it all kind of balances out, but the gold isn't going to be a factor. It's mostly going to be, once again, about that experience. Lich, level 2 ultimate versus uh, level 3 on the Shadow Shaman. Level 2 only on the Venomancer as well. Sand King, where are you? You're level 2 ultimate as well, so. Sand King needs to get that level 3 ultimate, but the pipe is just being such a pain in the ass, and Darks here. Well, you saw it in that last fight, getting a perfect, perfect wall of replica, catching like, what was it, two, three? Well, the vacuum caught three, I know, and I don't know if they all got replicated, but all that instant damage is a lot of frickin' damage, plus the illusion damage that's more of a sustained, not bursty kind of damage. This is why Darkseer gets banned out, and Darkseer luckily getting through for the mouse side, complexity banning out a couple more here as they deem more important, but I'm sure they're now kicking themselves because Darkseer is just walking all over their team. And where's the smoke? No smoke? Just group up for, um... Like, Complexity is a little bit behind, but they're still not out of this. Their Morphling got engaged upon by the Shadow Shaman, unfortunately, before he could pop off the BKB. So he got disabled pretty hard. There's the smoke. All five from Complexity. You need to head towards that bot lane. I don't think they know that... Oh, okay, now they know. Now they know where the targets are. Uh, are they going to turn around? Yeah, they are. Okay, so they're going to run into black. Just a matter of, do they have True Sight in the front? They do have Dust, they do have Sentry Wards. And are they going to pop it off to get him effectively? Bambo is actually, might be the one to reveal them out. Yes, they are revealed now. There goes a the waveform in from TC, but being pulled right back into the wa wall of Replica. Chain Frost is going to fly out, as well as the Epicenter, this time doing a lot more damage. Chain Frost bouncing in between all the heroes and Jao, taking a lot of damage from the creeps, as well as uh, the Sentry Wards, as well as the Clanks. Everyone from Complexity is simply dying. Black is, Black is on the chase, taking out one of the last heroes, and IX Mike is the last one to fall. Complexity getting completely team wiped, and there's the GG call by Complexity of Fluff and stuff. That's going to be game number two, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching. I'll be going straight into game number three as soon as it is up, so I hope you continue to keep watching. I'll see you guys in game number three. Once again, if you like my cast, it's right here for uh, more, I guess. And that's going to be it. Thanks for watching, guys. GG.